Today, we're going to talk about a topic that is a little controversial, although I don't really feel like it's that controversial if you've done the research, but that's what we're going to talk about here today. Um, but there is this idea that Kamala Harris is for us. There are some people who believe that. And if you've been following my channel, y'all think that, uh, y'all pretty much know where I stand on Kamala Harris at this point. Um, but I just want to really explain to those who may be unfamiliar with what Kamala Harris represents, uh, because it's, it's, it's much more dangerous than what people may realize. Um, Kamala Harris is, she isn't an anomaly. She was created. She was manufactured. And she is, without a doubt, 100%, absolutely, white supremacy in its final form. And what do I mean by that? Well, throughout the slave days, throughout civil rights, throughout all the, you know, you, you've seen all the, all the movements. Black people, particularly light-skinned black people, but black people in general, Oftentimes we have a carrot dangled in front of us. They always pick one out of the crowd who really, really wants to appeal to the generosity of Massa because they'll be rewarded. You know, you may be rewarded with being allowed to sleep in the house. Maybe you're given an important position. You don't have to worry about your family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This isn't new. We've seen it. It's taken many different forms. Now, black women have been the most oppressed group, bar none, not even close. It has always been black women because it isn't just unique to the United States. If you think it is, black women are the most oppressed group across the world. This is a fact. Black women have had to give their babies up back in the, you know, or excuse me, bear babies by white slave owners while married to their husbands and husbands couldn't do anything about it. The owners had rights to their, you know, basically had a right to that slave's body. Later on, they became inventive. They became powerful. And there's, after they were critiqued saying that what they were doing was their hair, maybe their hair was, they said their hair was ugly. Their, that dance was ugly. Their voices weren't beautiful. And then look what happened. Everybody wants their hair. Everybody wants their ability to dance. Everybody wants to look. Everybody wants to be able to dress like them, carry themselves like them, have the power and fierceness of a black woman. It is a commodity. You can't just have it. You have to go through something in order to get that. And black women have been absolutely the most oppressed. So what you end up seeing is Recently, the realization that this is true and nobody likes, likes taking advantage of truths about marginalized people more than the Democratic Party. See, the Democratic Party, they're unique in, in, in a very sinister way. They learn from Obama. They saw what happened when you can weaponize desperation, when you can weaponize identity, when you can weaponize the idea of someone else's experiences and focus that into a candidate and then <laughs> eventually make that candidate do whatever the hell you tell him to. We saw this with Obama. They figured out that Obama got 95% of the votes and nobody knew who the hell he was. No, 95% of the black vote. That was in the primary. In the general, he ended up with something close to 99% of the black vote. Seriously. They saw that. Now, what, what happened subsequently? They made less, it was less overt, but they ended up. Having Obama decide to bomb countries of color, decide to weaponize, the, the, the militarize and weaponize 
the um, police. Obama allowed Native Americans to be trampled all over in Standing Rock. I mean, the list really does go on. We don't have enough time to cover it all. But ultimately, Obama was not good for people of color. But they saw what it took to win because they, they demonized white people so much, white men, that they know they can't. They've convinced the world that white men are evil inherently. They've convinced them that there can never be a good white male politician. That's worthy of being president, and that is worthy of votes of the people of color or marginalized people in general. They've done that successfully in a very illegitimate way, by the way. They even spent a lot of time this year demonizing white women. After their, you know, white women could do no wrong two years ago with Hillary, now it's Intersectionality, intersectionality. Let's let white, women, black, black women speak because they were setting the stage for something like this. They've even gone so far as to convince you that a Bernie Sanders is racist and sexist, despite the fact that the only reason we talk about the prison industrial complex is because Bernie Sanders made it mainstream. mainstream. I was there, Fort Sumter, South Carolina. September. No, was it September? A lie. I think it was August. It was the end of August 2015. Sumter, South Carolina, in full of a front of a crowd full of white people, say that if you don't believe systemic racism is real, then you need to wake up. I saw him defend our Native American brothers and sisters when that was once considered political suicide, but Bernie Sanders provided a roadmap. And then they found somebody named Kamala Harris. Now, Kamala Harris was not an anomaly. Kamala Harris was manufactured. She was created. Kamala Harris, well, she's light-skinned. She's black enough. At least, she, at least she looks like it. Let's see what her parents did. Oh, man, we can't tell them everything about her parents because they might find out some stuff. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about something else. Let's say her parents were civil rights activists. So the moment that she lied about her parents' history of civil rights activism, you should have been a little curious because you've never heard anything about her parents' civil rights activism before she ran for president. You didn't hear about Kamala's supposed advocation of civil rights before she ran for president. And now that's all they talk about because they are trying to weaponize the black identity and the black struggle. So what do you do? You ignore the fact that Kamala Harris's mom has a video out right now where she was laughing about the fact that, and, and proud, boasting, braggadociously about the fact that her, she's direct descendant of slave owners. Proud of it. Which shouldn't be surprising. Kamala Harris's mother is of Desi descent and is white passing. Now, they always say Kamala Harris and her, her, her mother and father, they fought like they were as a, as a team. They were, they were tackling, they were at the epicenter of the civil rights movement. What they don't say is that Kamala Harris's parents divorced at a, while Kamala Harris was a very, at a very young age. Um, and actually, she took Kamala in the height of the civil rights movement, ran to Montreal after her divorce, Moved to the richest town in Montreal. Totally avoiding all of the like the craziness towards the, the climax of the civil rights movement. They don't ever talk about her parents as being separated at all, actually. I'm sure Kamala at some point mentions it in her book, but I doubt it because nobody ever discussed that part. They don't ever discuss Kamala's background as far as her Canadian they don't talk about the fact that Kamala didn't even come back until she was 18. Because then that may lead you to start questioning, well, does she actually care about the black experience? Well, that's where things get a little bit dicey because she doesn't. Now, this is coming from someone like myself who's lived the real black experience that Kamala Harris has helped to perpetuate. I've been held down by cops while they take a baton and beat me while, till my tooth cracks. I have a, this is a cap tooth right now. 
I've had my arm dislocated, my rotator cuff torn, then sent to the hospital and held hostage in the hospital by said police officers because they realized that they had beat up the wrong damn person because they were called on somebody else. But I was the only black man in the room, so they had to do what they had to do. In my younger years, I was accused of misdemeanor larceny. Of course, I didn't do it, but whatever. They wanted to teach a black man a lesson. So I go to court, I argue for myself successfully, if I might add, but the judge, who was apparently no longer a judge there because he got in trouble, he argued that uh, he wanted to teach me a lesson. That's what he told my mother. Now, this is after the bail. Everybody looked at me like, well, clearly he knows what he's talking about. He didn't do it. He shouldn't be found guilty. And he told me he wanted to teach me a lesson because next time, I better get a lawyer because God forbid a young black man ever <laughs> decided he wants to argue for himself in the courtroom. I know about the corruption of the system. And I know when someone has had the legitimate experiences of a black person in America, because you can't do the things that you've done that she's done, if you have. Listen, Kamala Harris, yeah, she increased conviction rates by like 20% after California was bringing conviction rates down. But, you know, private prison industry doesn't like that, nor do the law enforcement and police departments that pay her, that literally gave her money to her campaign. They didn't like that. So, yeah. She increased conviction rates to help them out. But guess who messed up? Guess who got messed up? Guess who got caught in it more than anything? She set a record high for black men being convicted in California's history. Yeah, Kamala did that. Her stances ultimately ended up hurting the black community in more than one way. Oh, remember how she didn't prosecute Mnuchin? Guess who was primarily affected by Mnuchin's real estate corruption, which once again, she knew, black people. But she didn't care about black people then. Remember all the people in California that were getting killed by cops while Kamala <laughs> was an attorney general? Stephon Clark being one of them. Kamala fought to make sure that those cops did not have to wear body cameras while they were shooting us dead in the street and sh knowing they were guilty, knowing they needed accountability, and knowing that we needed a way to find them, find them and hold them accountable. It is already difficult to hold them accountable with direct video footage. God forbid not having any footage at all. But And Kamala Harris knows who was disproportionately shot by police officers, and yet... Kamala didn't care. Kamala fought for the white establishment. Kamala fought for the white institutions that she knew was primarily holding black people in jail for various reasons, one of which was prison slave labor. And Kamala agreed with that considering she told her lawyers to make that argument in court when they were, she denied a judge ordering release of prisoners. She, as attorney general, denied the judge ordering release of prisoners because it would hurt slave labor. That is why Kamala Harris would say criminal justice reform. Of course, she I don't give a damn about reform. Reform? You can reform something and it can have the exact same functions. It just looks a little bit different. It looks a little bit prettier. But she won't say she wants to end the prison industrial complex because she has no intention on doing it. The Joanne Reeves of the world who have no connection to the black experience because she is of African descent, direct African descent, first generation. So she isn't connected to the black experience. They don't see us the same way. And it's just a brutally honest truth whether or not you want to accept it. That's why she's quick to, to label the adults movement started by Yvette Carnell as bots, as a, a, a movement that a black woman started. Call them bots. That's why she's willing to drive us towards Hillary Clinton, despite the fact that just a few years before that, she was saying how horrific Hillary Clinton was for black people. 
because they don't care about us. Those are limousine liberals. Black people who may not have had the exact same experiences as the rest of the black African-Americans in the United States, which have had truly unique experiences. They don't care about us. That's why they're more than willing to capitulate. They care about ad adulation. They care about adoration. They care about the love, the money, the prosperity. They've been individualized and separated from us, but they've been thrown back in front of us to deceive us while they blow up more countries of color, while they put more men and women of color in prison. Think about that. Obama messed up and he had some semblance of a heart. He was a, a damn human rights attorney before he came in and ultimately shit the bed. Imagine Kamala. Kamala laughed at the idea of putting parents and children in jail for being basically poor and being in situations that would disallow them from going to school. She laughed at that idea. And in another video, she wanted more jails. How? How can she be for us? They know for a fact that black people have been conditioned to, like they've taken advantage of our desperation. We wanna see, be represented. But don't believe those people who are saying that, oh, well, she's just being critiqued because she's a woman of color. CNN has protected her. MSNBC has protected her. Washington Post, New York Times, Mother Jones, The Root, they've all been protecting her. Why? Well, let's just say there's a reason that you can only argue that she's being attacked as a woman of color because that's what they're also telling you. What else are you supposed to speak about when they haven't discussed her record at all? But another woman of color, Tulsi Gabbard, has been attacked over and over again, but they don't seem to find that as a reason that she's been attacked. Nobody, she, woman of color, okay, well, who, who's she taking money from? The same people who have put us in the situation that we're in right now as black people. But you have been blinded you have been blinded by our real oppression. Now, that's some people. Others, the limousine liberals, they've been given positions, given titles, given money, given promise, prominence. Like I said, they've been individualized where they are made to look like they represent us, but they have never represented us, nor do they have any intention on representing us. They will, they, if you're not careful, the establishment will have you believing that your allies are your adversaries and that your adversaries are your allies. Like I said, Bernie Sanders is far from perfect, but Bernie Sanders has a much better civil rights record than Kamala Harris ever has. And that's a fact. One day, I mean, I would love to see Nina Turner in, in, in the executive office one day. I really, truly would. But you notice they don't defend Nina Turner. Oh, matter of fact, they don't defend Nina Turner. They call Nina Turner a traitor. That's what they call Nina Turner. They stopped Nina Turner from speaking at the Democratic National Convention last minute as she was about to introduce Bernie Sanders because they could not have America believing the idea that, oh, wow, it turns out a black woman really does support Bernie Sanders and black women do support Bernie Sanders. And there's a large, large sect of black women who absolutely support Bernie Sanders, a large group. But they couldn't. Have, but when she was disallowed from speaking, did they say it was because she was a black woman? Did Nina Turner ever make it because she's black? Did Nina Turner ever mention the fact that she's black for her to get her support, for her to get her adoration? She doesn't have to because you hear Nina speak, you hear the things she speaks about, you see the way she carries herself, you see the people she interacts with, and you don't have to guess where Nina Turner came from. 
She shows you, she demonstrates it, she can't help it because that is who we are. It is not manufactured. You see the difference? Remember how Clayton had to carry hot sauce in the bag? Cory Booker, I got my PhD from the streets. Kamala Harris, I listen to Lemonade at cookouts. My parents were civil rights activists. Your mom was an Indian conservative woman. She was conservative. We've never heard about your parents like that until you announced you were going to run. You didn't talk about your 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 parents' civil rights record when you were running for the Senate. I've never read a damn thing about your parents' civil rights record. I've never read a th anything about your civil rights record. Oh, no, I did. Yeah, it was all horrific. I did. It was. I forgot. It was horrific. And they are trying to convince black people that she is the answer. She doesn't care about us at all. She is the final form of white supremacy. And as hard as that is for someone to accept, it's the truth. I can expect a black, I mean, excuse me, not a black person. I can expect a white. When you use corruption to keep people in jail, when you use corruption to protect cops, when you keep a black man in jail for on death row for killing a, a, a white family that it turned out he didn't even do and you wouldn't even allow the case to be retried, when you fight, when you advocate for the death penalty, fought against this repeal, knowing who is primarily affected, it is black men. You're not for us. And don't dare tell us that, oh, if you don't support her, then you hate black women. You hate black people. You don't want to see us thrive. Not like that. I refuse to allow that to represent the soul of black people. When she clearly represents everything that we have fought against for two centuries in this country. Malcolm X warned us about those, those types, the bourgeoisie liberals, the bourgeoisie black liberals. Martin Luther King warned us about these types. Heed their warnings. Kamala should have known better, but in all likelihood, she did know better and she didn't care. Thanks for watching that segment of Mikasa Sukasa. You can donate to our Patreon and keep helping the network grow by clicking on the link in the description below. And also make sure you join us at justinform.com. And finally, make sure you subscribe to us on Roku and be part of the very first independent news network on Roku TV. But more than anything else, always remember, find your balance. Peace.